Hello everyone and I'm back with a brand spanking new Oscar experiment that I'm not gonna lie I, I've been dying to show you if you're new to the channel then you already know that aside from doing predictions and reviews I love doing fun little experiments to see if we could correctly predict best picture so currently we have the Oscar stat stack the preferential ballot experiment we have the best picture nomination experiment but this new experiment was actually inspired by a comment i received last year so typically best picture is one of the toughest categories to predict however last year three out of the four acting races were very close so much so that many expressed a desire for an experiment to help predict in those categories so i went into my cave i delved through the data and I created this brand new experiment. And though I wish I had this experiment last year, that would have been really helpful. But you know, that when they invented the seatbelt back in the day, it probably took someone going through the windshield. So it was after the fact, but now we are prepared. And hopefully, whenever there's a close acting race in the future, this formula can help decide which actor has the edge coming into Oscar evening. And this experiment, by the way, doesn't just cover best actress or best actor. This formula is for all four acting categories. And so today I'm gonna to walk you through how this formula works. And then I'm also gonna be making another follow-up video before Oscar night to reveal the winners for this coming Oscars. But let's go ahead and get this experiment started. Now, to be as scientific as possible, it should be said that there is not a foolproof 100% formula out there and if there was I think we'd all know about it so there are just some aspects of an Oscar race that you cannot account for you know there could be a sudden pandemic an actor could throw a hotel phone at someone a long overdue narrative can form or an actor mid-season can switch categories anything can happen however I think I've created a relatively simple formula of the aspects of a race that we can track. So to demonstrate how this works below, you're gonna see that we use last year's best actress race as an example. And as you can see, we have last year's nominees listed. We have Michelle Williams for The Fablemans. We have Kate Blanchett for Tar. Michelle Yeoh for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Anna DeArmas for Blonde and Danielle Deadwire. Oh, sorry, that, I mean, Andrea Riseborough for To Leslie. Now, how it works is I'm going to give these nominees points in the form of water. The ball here is gonna represent the Oscar itself and whatever nominee whose ball is highest and thus has the most points will be the winner. I also broke this experiment into two rounds. One round's gonna cover award shows and the second round's gonna co cover kind of other contributing factors. But let me just stop blabbering. Let's go ahead and get started. Jumping into round one, with previous award shows. So every time an actor wins a televised award show, it always gives that actor a boost to win the Oscar. So let's start with the first major award show of the season, the Golden Globes. Now out of the last 18 Academy Best Actress winners, 15 of them also won at Golden Globes in either comedy or drama, about 83%. So the winner of the Golden Globe last year was Kate Blanchett for drama and Michelle Yeoh for comedy. So each one of them gets a little bit of juice and thus a point. All right, so let's go ahead and award Kate Blanchett. And we're gonna award a point to Michelle Yeoh. Okay. All right, another award show. Well, my ball's almost falling. All right, another award show that I would say is important, but perhaps not as important as Globes or like an industry award like SAG is the Critics' Choice Awards. So just to give some context, I believe around 6 million Americans watch the Globes. Typically, it airs on NBC. The Critics' Choice Award, I think, airs on CW. Last year, it got under a million viewers, so visibility is less, and it's typically not as accurate in predicting out of the actress category. Um, it has the worst track record, I think, of any of the acting ones. It matched up with the eventual Oscar winners 10 out of the last 18 years. But since it's not nothing, but not also as influential as winning maybe another major award or is not nearly as consistent as other awards. So for that reason, I'm gonna award the Critics' Choice winner a half a point. And last year, the Critics' Choice winner was Kate Blanchett. So we'll go ahead and give Kate Blanchett half a point. 
So as you can see, Kate Blanchett is currently leading by hair, and I think now is actually a good time to talk about aspects of a race that you really just cannot account for. So when Kate Blanchett, for example, won the Golden Globes, she wasn't in attendance because she had a prior engagement, so though she won the award, she missed that televised speech. So when Blanchett won at Critics' Choice, she was in attendance, but in her speech, she kind of like pretty much like poo-pooed award shows and, and called to stop the televised horse race of it all, which is basically what the Oscars is. I would love it if we would just change Stop the televised horse race of it all. It's really kind of difficult to measure whether that even hurt her chances or not. Just one of those things we'll never know. But okay, so Kate Blanchett's currently in lead, but let's keep going. In most years, the next major award, I would say, is the most important award to win uh, if you're an actor, the Screen Actors Guild Award. Now, it doesn't always match up. Most years, there's always bound to be maybe one that doesn't match. However, last year, all four acting categories matched with the eventual Oscar winners. So SAG is, is very important and it makes sense because you know, the acting branch is the largest branch within the Academy. The Screen Actors Guild is the closest we have to knowing kind of who the actors within the Academy favor. So in the best actress category, uh, 13 out of the last SAG best actress winners went on to win the Oscar, but because SAG is a biggie, we are going to award one and a half points to the winner of SAG. And last year, the winner was Michelle Yeoh. And just like that, Michelle Yeoh takes the lead. Now we go to our next big award show and that's BAFTA, the British Academy of Film and Television Arts Award. So whenever there's a spoiler, BAFTA is often usually where that spoiler is seen. I'm talking Anthony Hopkins or Olivia Colman, for example, won a BAFTA, then both surprised at the Oscars. I think 14 out of the last 18 winners at BAFTA went on to win the Oscar and they have a sizable voting membership similar to the Academy. To put it in comparison, uh, the Globes, for example, in 2019 had 87 journalists that voted. Recently increased the 300 members, which, by the way, resulted in some pretty spectacular nominees this year. But the size of the Academy voter membership is around 9,500 from a Variety article that I saw the other day. And I, I saw BAFTA has about 7,500 voting members. So is there an overlap between some BAFTA members? There is, but I, I'm not exactly sure how many, I can't really find that number anyway. I assume it's not very sizable, but if anyone knows how many BAFTA members are Academy members, please leave that below. So BAFTA is incredibly important. So last year, the winner of BAFTA was Kate Blanchett for Tar. And so, this portion, round one, covers award shows, but before we move on to round two, which considers a few other factors, this race is clearly between Michelle Yeoh and Kate Blanchett. So they are gonna be moving on to round two in the experiment. Now, in order to move on to round two within this experiment, you need to receive a point, either at Golden Globes, SAG, or BAFTA. For my research, going back to 2005, no actor in any category lead or supporting, won the Oscar without winning either SAG, a BAFTA, or Globe. So it's safe to assume if you're gonna win the Oscar, you gotta win one of those major awards. So if an actor wins all four of those awards, for example, just wins them all in a clean sweep, there's not even a need for round two, it's over. But here, Yo and Michelle split are splitting the prizes. So we're gonna go to round two with Yo and Michelle as they are the only two to have received points. So let's move on to round two. All right, let's go ahead and talk about another aspect of the race that's tough to account for, and that's momentum. So oftentimes, the winner who wins the Oscar is the one who has the momentum and has won most recently. So for the Best Actress category, for example, 15 out of the last 18 winners of the Academy also won most recently at one of these kind of major award shows that we mentioned. Now in most years, typically the order for award shows is Globes, 
critics, SAG, and then BAFTA occurs right before the Oscars. However, the dates for these award shows are occasionally shifting. So looking before the pandemic, say like 2019, that was the order. However, last year, for example, it started with Globes, then Critics' Choice, then BAFTA, and right before the Oscars was SAG. So what I did is I went back and noted the dates of every award show for every year dating back to 2007, and whoever the winner at the most recent award show, I awarded half a point. Now that's gonna help represent the actor who has the current momentum heading into Oscars. So last year, the major award show before the Oscars wasn't BAFTA, it was SAG. So momentum point goes to Michelle Yeoh. So half a point for Michelle Yeoh. Half a point for Michelle Yeoh. Okay. Another common pattern I saw is performances that were featured in a Best Picture nominee typically had an edge in winning over a performance that wasn't nominated in a Best Picture nominee. So for example, let's look at the year 2020. It was a really close four-way actress race. Frances McDormand ended up winning for Nomadland over say like Viola Davis for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which that movie wasn't nominated for Best Picture. And when you think about it, that kind of makes sense. Well. Not that Ma Rainey wasn't nominated for Best Picture, that doesn't make sense to me, but when you think about films voters are likely to prioritize, you imagine they start with the films that are nominated for Picture, and then they kind of go down the stack. So another example of this could be in 2018, when the wife's Glenn Close, who was actually favorited to win the Oscar, lost to Olivia Colman to the favorite. So the, the, the wife wasn't nominated for Best Picture, the favorite was. So last year, both Michelle Yeoh and Kate Blanchett were nominated for films that also had a Best Picture nominee, so both get half a point. All right, so Michelle Yeoh is leading, and now we have one more point to award. The last point could tie it up, and then we have to go to a tiebreaker round. So another element that I found is when performances are pinned up against each other, the performance that's either based on a real life person or is physically transformative has the edge. Now, physically transformative, it, it's somewhat subjective, but sometimes it's really obvious, right? Sometimes we all see it. Meryl Streep and the Iron Lady, pretty obvious, transformative. Sometimes it's questionable. And if it's questionable, I use the makeup category to help decide. So say Joaquin Phoenix and the Joker, I would consider it transformative, but the makeup nomination helps clarifies that for me. So Joker would get a point. So this year, Yo and Blanchett's characters were not based on real life figures, nor were they very physically transformative. And also the makeup category doesn't nominate either film, so neither get the point. And just like that, Michelle Yo wins by a hair. Now in the situation where there was a tie, I have created a tiebreaker round to help break that tie. And we do have a tie in this experiment, so I'll show you that in a little bit and how we deal with that tie. But first, let's quickly run through this experiment in other acting categories. So in the supporting actor category last year, Kihi Kwan ran away with the most of the awards. He won Golden Globes and then he won the Critics' Choice Award. Barry Keoghan won BAFTA. But Kwan then won at SAG, and moving into round two with Kwan and Kyogen. Kwan had the momentum with winning most recently at SAG, and both actors were in Best Picture nominees, so they both get those points. And neither were based on real life people, so the clear winner was Ki Hoi Kwan. Best Supporting Actress was much closer. Angela Bassett kicked off the season winning for Black Panther Wakanda Forever at the Globes. Then Bassett won at Critics' Choice. At BAFTA, Carrie Condon won for The Banshee's Venice Sharon. And then Jamie Lee Curtis won at SAG. So now we have a three-way race going into round two. The momentum point went to Jamie Lee Curtis because SAG was the most recent award show. And the performances also in a Best Picture nominee was Jamie Lee Curtis for Everything Everywhere All at Once and Carrie Condon for The Banshees of Inna Sharon, so they both get those half points. All characters were not based off a real life person or historical figure, so no one gets the point there. And by a hair, Jamie Lee Curtis takes it with 2.5 over Condon and Bassett with only two. But let's go to arguably the closest race of this year, Best Actor. So Best Actor, Austin Butler and Colin Farrell wins the first awards at Globes. 
Brendan Fraser hits back, winning at the Critics' Choice Awards. Austin Butler wins BAFTA. And Fraser hits immediately back, winning at the SAG Awards. And, all right, so going into round two with three nominees, Fraser, Farrell, and Butler. The Best Picture half point goes to Austin Butler and Colin Farrell, as The Whale was not nominated picture, but Elvis and Banshees was, so they get the half point. Fraser winning at SAG gives him that momentum boost. So tied, we go to our final physically transformative or real life person point. Elvis is real, the whale was physically transformative. So that leaves us with a complete tie between Butler and Fraser. Now in the event of a tie, which by the way, it's, it's pretty rare. You first admit, wow, this is a close race, but then you move on to the tiebreaker round. The current drill is to look at three factors. Which actor has the most mentions across the board? who got SAG, and we also look at which actor was in a film that was a top tier Best Picture nominee. And we figure out what is a top tier Best Picture nominee by seeing which nominees in Best Picture has also a Best Director nomination. If there's still no winner, then we go to the highest audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. All right, so the tiebreaker round for last year, most mentions across the board, both had four mentions across the board, both get half a point. The winner of SAG, that's Brennan Fraser. And then who was in the Best Picture nominee that was also nominated for director? Neither Aronofsky or Baz Luhrmann were nominated for director, so Fraser wins in the tiebreaker round. Now running this experiment on previous years, the tiebreaker round is pretty rare. The point of this experiment is to create a formula that is stronger than looking at any individual precursor alone. So one of the strongest matchups has been the Best Actor category and SAG. 16 out of the last 18 winners at SAG Best Actor went on to win the Oscar two times it missed. Uh, Chadwick Boseman and Denzel Washington. This formula, though, gives us 17 out of the last 18. So let me show you how this experiment panned out going back to all the actor races dating back to 2007. Daniel Day-Lewis for There Will Be Blood, clearing away the winner there in 2007. Classic close race in 08. Here we have Sean Penn. He takes it by hair for Milk over Mickey Rourke. Jeff Bridges wins for Crazy Heart. Colin Firth dominates the board for King's Speech. John Desjardins for The Artist. Daniel Day-Lewis for Lincoln. Matt McConaughey from Dallas Buyers Club. That was a terrible impression. He wins. Eddie Redmayne for Theory of Everything. Leonardo DiCaprio for The Revenant, he won. Casey Affleck for Manchester by the Sea wins. Gary Oldman walks the season for Darkest Hour. Rami Malek lip syncs his way to a win for Bohemian Rhapsody. Joaquin Phoenix dominated for The Joker. And then we have our first time the formula fails. We have Chadwick Boseman loses to Anthony Hopkins. I mean, great example of an Oscar race with factors that you cannot account for. 2020, right? We had a pandemic closing down movie theaters, um, a tragic loss. We had Ma Rainey miss Best Picture, and The Father was like a complete late breaker in the race. So to call Hopkins that year, you kind of just had to go for a limb. The following year, Will Smith won pretty clearly. And in a very close race, Fraser wins in the tiebreaker round. So this is how the formula works. I, I can't believe you even made it this far, but just a reminder, this formula is brand new. So I imagine I will be fine tuning this uh, more down the road. And also just a reminder that I am not a real scientist. I created this formula mostly as a, a fun visual tool to just see, um, you know, how close the acting races really are. And instead of hyper focusing on one award or one factor to look at all of them. But again, you still have to keep an eye out, you know, for, you know, some discrepancies, category placement changes, and take all those into account. But otherwise, I think that this is a rather fun way to predict winners in the acting categories, and I'm very excited to see who this year's winner will be. But let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions to make this experiment even more accurate, 
please feel free to comment below. In fact, the only reason this experiment exists is because of your guys' feedback, so keep it coming. And if you like this video and want to see more, hit that subscribe button and also consider sharing this video with a fellow Oscar enthusiast. That really helps out the channel. And again, once the data and awards show roll in this year, I'm going to do a follow-up video to share this year's winner. So keep an eye out for that video. Um, better yet, you can actually hit the notification bell so you don't miss that video. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, Letterboxd, links in the bio. Thanks always for watching. You guys are the best. And until next time, I will see you at the Oscars.